The First Words of the Infant Jesus. The Gospel of James on Jesus' Childhood. A biographical gospel of the Lord from the time Joseph took Mary as his wife. July 22, 1843. The Lord said to Jacob Lorber, "James, a son of Joseph, has recorded all this. However, with time, it has become so distorted that it cannot be allowed to be included in the Scriptures as authentic. I, however, will give you the genuine Gospel of James." But only from the above-mentioned period onwards, from the time Joseph took Mary, for James had included the biography of Mary since her birth, as well as that of Joseph. Link to the PDF download below. Cyrenius, at the time of Jesus, is the supreme governor of Rome in all Asia and the part of Africa, as well as in Greece. Chapter Fifty-Two: Cyrenius' journey to Egypt and his arrival in Ostracene. Joseph and Mary's decision to welcome Cyrenius. The first words of the infant. The set spring soon arrived, for in this region it starts already in the middle of February. But Cyrenius scheduled his trip to Egypt only for the middle of March, which month the Romans usually chose for military affairs. By the middle of March, Cyrenius had his ship equipped again, and on the fifteenth, he promptly embarked on his journey to Egypt together with Maronius Pilla. This time, the journey took five days. On this occasion, Cyrenius let himself be received with all honors in Ostracene, because he had to undertake major military inspections and visitations this time. This required that he be received with all honors. His arrival, therefore, caused a great sensation in Ostracene, word of which also reached the villa we all know about. Therefore, Joseph sent two of his oldest sons to the town to find out exactly what had caused all the excitement in the city. The two sons hurried and came back soon with the good news that Cyrenius had arrived in the town and where he was staying. When Joseph heard this, he spoke to Mary, "Listen, we have to visit this great benefactor immediately, and the infant should not stay behind." Mary, overjoyed about this, spoke, "Oh dear Joseph, that it goes without saying, for after all, the infant is the true darling of Cyrenius." Mary promptly dressed the by now considerably grown child in new clothes she had made herself, and asked the child with all her motherly love and innocence, "Well, my loveliest son, my dearest Jesus, are you coming with us to visit dear Cyrenius?" The child smiled cheerfully to Mary and distinctly spoke the first word, and the word was, "Mary, now I follow you until one day you follow me." These words created such an elevated mood in the Joseph's entire house that Joseph almost forgot about the planned visit to Cyrenius. But the small child himself admonished Joseph to not postpone his plan. For Cyrenius would have many things to do this time for the welfare of the people. Chapter fifty-three, one. Joseph and Mary immediately set out on the short trip, and their oldest son accompanied them, showing them the shortest way to the fortress where Cyrenius was staying. But when they arrived at the main square, it was filled with soldiers, and it was not easy to reach the entrance of the fortress. And Joseph spoke to Mary, beloved wife, look, what is impossible for us human beings will remain impossible. So it is now utterly impossible to reach the fortress through all these rows of soldiers. So should we just turn back and wait for a more favorable time? Also, the infant looks quite anxiously at all these rows of warriors, 
He could easily get frightened and become sick afterwards, and it would be our fault. So let us turn back. But Mary spoke, Beloved Joseph, see, if my eyes do not deceive me, then that man who is just passing in front of the last row with a shining helmet on his head is Cyrenius. Let us wait a little until he comes our way. Perhaps he will see us and will then surely give us sign as to what we have to do or whether we should come to him or not. Joseph spoke, Yes, beloved wife, you are right and obviously it is Cyrenius himself. But look carefully at the face of the other warrior who walks right next to him. If that is not the infamous governor of Jerusalem, my name is not Joseph. What is he doing here? Are we the reason for his presence? Has Cyrenius then shamefully handed us over to Herod? The good part is that he does not know me or you personally, so we can still save ourselves by a new flight deeper into Egypt. If he would know me or you, we would already be lost, for he is now only 20 paces ahead of us and could get hold of us immediately. Therefore, let us withdraw as fast as possible. Because if Cyrenius sees us, and he will still know us for sure, we'll be done for. At this, Mary got frightened and wanted to flee back at once, but the pressure of the crowd did not permit an escape. For curiosity had led so many people to the square that it was as good as impossible to pass through. Joseph therefore said, What is impossible is impossible. Let us surrender to the divine will. The Lord will surely not leave us this time either. Let us put our heads closely together as a precaution, so that at least Cyrenius will not recognize us by our faces. On this occasion, Cyrenius came very close to Joseph and pushed him a bit out of the way, but Joseph could not move because of the pressing crowd. So, Cyrenius looked a bit closer at this stubborn man and promptly recognized Joseph. When he saw Joseph and Mary and the child who was smiling at him, his eyes filled with tears of joy. Yes, he was so overjoyed that he could hardly speak. But he regained his composure quickly, took Joseph's hand, pressed it on his heart and spoke. My exalted friend, you are looking at my affairs. Forgive me that I have not yet been able to visit you, but the review has finished just now. I will immediately let the troops withdraw to their barracks. Then I will give a short order for tomorrow to the commander, quickly change my clothes and be here with you and escort you to your house. Still full of joy, he now turned to Mary and the child and asked, while caressing the infant, Oh, you my life, you my all, do you still remember me? Do you love me, my loveliest child? And the child raised his hands widely towards Cyrenius, smiled at him gently and spoke clearly. Oh, Cyrenius, I know you well and love you because you love me so much. Come, come to me, for I have to bless you. This was way more than Cyrenius' heart could bear. He took the child in his arms pressed him to his heart and spoke. Yes, you, my life. With you on my arms, I shall give the command for a long peace between the nations. Thereupon, he called the commander to him, informed him that he was fully satisfied and ordered him to let the troops withdraw and to provide for them for three days, i.e. out of Cyrenius' own pocket and invited the commander and some other captains for a good meal to Joseph's villa. And together with Joseph and Mary, he set out as he was carrying the child himself and escorted by the increasingly wandering Maronius Pilla towards the villa and immediately had a festive meal prepared by his servants. This caused a sensation in the city, for all people got inflamed with a love for Cyrenius as they recognized in him a great lover of children.